welcome. My name is Cabret, and I'm a community partnerships manager at Girls Who Code. That essentially means that I get to work with wonderful community partners like Loudoun County and other school districts across the state. I'm really excited for this session. I'm really grateful that all of you are staying. I know we're at the tail end of this internship fair, but I hope that by the end of this session, I can inspire you to get involved in some of our 2022 free virtual summer programs. So with that, let's get started. The first thing to think about or the first question to ask is why we do the work that we do at Girls Who Code. So I find that it's helpful to first learn a little bit more about the world of coding opportunities and the movement at Girls Who Code. And then I'll dive into some details about the specific programs that you can participate in. Computer science skills are extremely high in demand for employers today. There are over 500,000 open computing jobs right now that are waiting to be filled. But there are less than 80,000 computer science graduates in the United States each year. These jobs will only continue to grow in the future, so this will be important to remember when choosing a career. And when you learn to code, you actually unlock some of the highest paying salaries. And what's more, computer science skills are also helpful no matter what you wanna do for your career. It's not just for folks working in traditional big companies, tech companies, 67% of computing jobs are actually in non-tech industries like fashion, arts, entertainment, medicine, and more. So you can combine your many passions together when building apps and websites, programs, and more to address the things that you actually care about. I always try to stress to folks that you don't have to be a part of Girls Who Code simply to become a coder. You can really think about it as marrying your interests that you already have and finding a way to mold coding into them. These jobs also tend to offer more flexibility in when you work. They can be found anywhere across the country or even around the world and even right in your own community. This type of job can also allow you to work remotely, giving you even more flexibility, which I think we appreciate more than ever these past few years. Yet even with these exciting opportunities, not, all, not everyone has always been included. Today, less than one in five computer scientists are women, and even a smaller amount are women of color. This gender gap in technology has continued to widen over the past few decades, and that becomes a huge problem for two reasons. One, when women and non-binary folks are pushed out of this space, they lose out on these high paying jobs. And two, we lose out as a society when companies create new products or programs that don't include the diverse perspectives from all walks of life. At Girls Who Code, we are an international nonprofit leading this movement to close this gender gap in tech and to change the image of what a programmer looks like and does. We do this by providing free computer science programs to students like you to help prepare for your career. At Girls Who Code, we know that the possibilities of how we use technology are endless, and we challenge you to use that technology to get creative and to dream big. You can see some of the unique ways we've used technology here, from creating a visual album with Lizzo for International Day of the Girl, to our most recent collaboration with Doja Cat for the world's first codable music video for her song, Woman. Women and non-binary folks not only use technology to create cool innovations, but also use it as a tool to make the world a better place. So I encourage you to think about this first question. What is a social issue you care about and why? You don't have to share necessarily, but feel free to throw it in the chat if you'd like. Think about this question. It's a great place to start to think about how coding could play into your solution. The second thing to think about is how do you think you would use technology to solve it? That's essentially the question we try to work through through all of our Girls Who Code programming. How can we take problems we see in our everyday lives or communities and think about using coding and technology to solve them? At Girls Who Code, we want to help you gain these exact tools you need to solve these important issues, no matter how big or small. And our alumni have developed websites to teach others about anti-bullying, built apps and programs to promote water conservation, even 3D printed PPE masks to support COVID relief efforts, and so much more. And you too can get the skills needed to make a greater impact on what you are passionate about. So I encourage you to think about those two questions throughout the presentation. And the best way to start is by applying to join us this summer. So now I'll dive into a more detailed overview of the programs and I will definitely answer any questions about logistics or eligibility or anything that I go over at the end. During our Girls Who Code virtual summer programs, you'll learn the computer science skills you need to make a positive impact, gain invaluable insight and diverse tech careers, and connect with inspiring role models in the field to help you get a head start in your career, all completely for free. 
So that's the first thing to note that these programs are entirely free to apply for and participate in. Our program focus on three main things. The first is careers. You'll spend your entire summer with the world's top companies like EA, Pfizer, and Viacom CVS. You'll get an inclusive look at the tech field by hearing from guest speakers, participating in workshops, and connecting with inspiring female and non-binary engineers and entrepreneurs in the tech space. The second theme is skills and impact. You'll of course learn key computer science skills through hands-on real world projects on topics that you care about. You'll learn coding languages like HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, and can choose to learn about cybersecurity in Python. You'll not only learn how to code and problem solve, but you'll also gain the confidence you need to take risks, dream big, and become a change maker in your own community. The third thing to think about is sisterhood. You'll get to meet students from all walks of life as you create friendships and build this network. And after you participate, you'll become a lifelong member of our supportive and diverse sisterhood of over 450,000 girls, young women, and non-binary students from all around the world. And as an alumni, you'll gain access to our career support for life. These themes are found in both of our virtual summer program options, including the summer immersion program and the self-paced program, which I'll dive into next. We know that you all have different learning styles and schedules. So we've created two different program offerings for you to choose from. First, let's take a look at which programs you would be eligible for. Both programs are for girls and non-binary students with any level of coding experience, whether you're brand new to coding or have had some prior coding experience in the past. For this summer immersion program, students currently in ninth through 11th grade are eligible to apply. And these are students that will be rising sophomores, juniors, or seniors over the summer during the program. It's available to applicants who have never participated in a Girls Who Code summer program previously. For the self-paced program, Students currently in 9th through 12th grade are eligible to apply. That means that if you are a senior who's about to graduate, you are now able to participate in our self-based program, which is a new addition from last year. And for this program only, those who are brand new to Girls Who Code and any former Girls Who Code summer program alumni are welcome. We especially, especially encourage students to apply who come from backgrounds that are even more historically underrepresented in computer science, including students who are low income, eligible for free and reduced lunch, or identify as Black, Latinx, or Indigenous. The biggest difference between our programs is when and how they take place. So our summer immersion program hosts live virtual classrooms for two weeks long from Monday to Fridays. These live classroom se sessions rather start at 12 p.m. Eastern time, 11 a.m. Central, 9 a.m. Pacific, and take place for about three to four hours per day. We offer three rounds of this two-week program over the summer, so you can choose which dates work best for you if you have other plans. And on the application, be sure to select your preferred program dates listed here on the slide. Round one is from June 17th to July 1st. The second round is from July 11th to July 22nd. And the third round is from August 1st to August 12th. So hopefully there's an option there that works for you. And as a reminder, because the summer program is only two weeks long, each day is super important. So please make sure you'll be available to commit to the entire two weeks for the program to make sure that you don't miss anything. And that self-paced program is helpful for those who need a more flexible schedule over the summer. You'll learn through virtual self-paced study to complete the program independently at any time within a six week period from July 5th through August 12th. So please note those program dates for the self-paced version of this program. You'll earn coding badges for each coding language you choose to learn in the self-paced program. And it only takes about 10 hours per badge. Plus, you'll have the option to join weekly live advisory sessions to ask questions, to build that community and sisterhood, and just to meet other students. Our summer immersion program is designed for beginner level coders, and you will learn the coding languages HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. In week one, you'll build two projects. One is a personal portfolio website and a BuzzFeed style personality quiz using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. In week two, You'll work on a final personal project focused on activism and web design to help you tackle those social issues in the world you hope to solve. Our self-paced program is designed for beginner and intermediate level coders, and you can learn the same programs that the summer immersion program students will learn, including HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. 
However, the self-paced program also allows you to earn an intermediate badge in cybersecurity in Python, which is brand new for us. So anyone who's familiar with the program, this is a brand new offering. And you can earn one coding badge for each coding language you learn and can choose to earn as many badges as you like. Again, all of that for the self-paced version. There are also exclusive benefits to joining either of our programs. For the Summer Immersion program, each classroom is hosted by one of our top company partners, and you'll get access to amazing virtual events. As a reminder, both of the programs are completely free, and for the Summer Immersion program only, you can also apply for a grant of up to $500 to provide you with additional financial support for participating. So I'll repeat that. For the Summer Immersion program, you can also complete a grant application for up to $500 to provide you with additional financial support for participating. So if you would, were someone who would have taken a summer job this summer, if you were not to participate or apply, or if you had any other commitments or needs over the summer, you can apply for this grant to supplement that. For the self-paced program, as a reminder, you'll get to earn coding badges for each coding language offering you complete. And students from both programs will have exclusive access to Girls Who Code's college and career support for life, including our Girls Who Code Hiring Summit, our virtual mentoring, our Girls Who Code talk series, and a variety of other career support events and opportunities. Last year was the first year we hosted a hiring summit to bring together some of our top company partners and recent college graduates who had a difficult time finding a job during COVID. And after that hiring summit, one of our partners, Wells Fargo, even hired 17 attendees from the event alone. You will not want to miss opportunities like these. You might be wondering what it would look like once you actually join. During the virtual summer immersion program, each day will look slightly different with fun activities and events to give you the best experience possible. After logging onto your virtual classroom, again at 12 p.m. Eastern, you'll spend the first few hours learning computer science skills in web-based coding working on final projects and connecting with your classmates through some sisterhood activities. After a break, you'll have an opportunity to attend those virtual sessions, those events with top partners that offer behind the scenes access to what it's really like to work at these tech companies. You will also have the option to join student hours with your teacher and teaching assistants every day for 75 minutes after the virtual class time. Then you'll work independently on any assigned projects on work from the day's lesson. For the self-paced program, remember that you'll be able to do all of this learning independently and on your own time and at your own pace. And if you want to meet other students and ask questions, you'll also have the option to join weekly live advisory sessions with Girls Who Code advisors. So there's plenty of support for regardless of which program you select. Finally, requirements for participation. To get the most out of these programs, you'll need a computer or laptop that has audio and video, internet access, headphones if you have them, and generally a space to work, anything that you would have had for any type of virtual learning. Before I go over how to apply, let's see why you should join us. We can't stress in us how much learning to code can change your life. Our summer programs are just one step on a path towards a career in tech. And those careers, again, are in demand and very flexible. The demand for these skills are three times the national average, and the average computing job pays over $100,000 annually. Plus, computer science skills are useful in any industry. So you don't have to choose between computer science and other things and passions that you care about. You can really combine those interests together and use this summer experience to think about how. Finally, finding your next opportunity is always, always easier when you know someone. That's why the Girls Who Code Sisterhood will have your back. It's an incredible network to lean on. Okay, with that, I'm gonna dive into how to apply. So this is the time to think about questions and maybe follow along uh, to look up the application link as I go through it. So to apply to join us this summer, all you have to do is head to girlswhocode.com slash summer apply and fill out a quick 15 minute application. And I mean it, it is very, very brief. We're interested in learning more about you through this application, but we will not ask for GPA, transcript or any recommendations. So it's very easy to complete. And you can either apply before our early application deadline in mid-February or the regular deadline in mid-March. And after you submit this application, you will also be asked to complete an optional grant application. So that's what I mentioned for the Summer Immersion Program, where you can get up to $500 of financial support. 
After you submit your application, early acceptance applicants will be notified by mid-March and general acceptance applicants will be notified by mid-April, so about a month after you apply. To get the most out of our programs, like I said, you'll need a computer or laptop that has audio and video and internet access, and if you have them. Here we can talk about what to do if you happen to be placed on the wait list. There's definitely no need to worry. All students who are put on the wait list will be considered for the regular deadline. And if you apply for early acceptance, you get priority wait list consideration. Since Loudoun County is a Girls Who Code community partner, that means if you apply and select Loudoun County on your application, you'll actually receive priority consideration. So this means that if you submit normally, you don't receive any weight on your application because of your affiliation to this community partner. So there is a question on the application that asks you if you're affiliated with any um, local school districts who are partnered with Girls Who Code, make sure to select LCPS and then your application will automatically get weighted consideration. Finally, resources. As always, Girls Who Code is here to help. I am more than happy to have another session with you or walk you through the application if you're looking for support or if you have any questions about the program or your eligibility. In addition to me, we have our website, girlswhocode.com slash summer programs. It's a great one-stop shop for all the information about the program. You can find webinars and testimonials from past participants there as well. And of course, as always, you can email girlswhocode at summer at girlswhocode.com and someone will get back to you. So with that, I ask, what are you waiting for? Apply now to join for join our summer movement in one of our Girls Who Code programs this summer. I am more than happy now to take any questions or hear any concerns about eligibility and which program you might be interested in joining. Thank you so much. Oh, okay, I see a question in the chat. Um, well, we're looking at CS experience. So um, we do ask questions about your past coding or CS knowledge, as well as your interest in how you'd like to use these skills moving forward. So there is a small brief short answer uh, portion of the application where we are asking what you hope to get out of this program. So that holds a lot of weight. Yeah, and essentially we're really looking for anyone of any skill level. So even if you're someone who has had some limited coding experience, we still recommend you apply because the summer immersion program is designed for beginner level coders. If you're someone who has a little bit more experience and think you could handle something a little bit more advanced, you're more than welcome to also try to apply for that SPP program where you can do um, advanced coursework in cybersecurity. But the application is very easy and brief. And as I mentioned, if you select your community partner, you will get um, priority consideration. So that is consideration just for being affiliated with this wonderful district and this network. And then on top of that, if you're to apply early, you also are kind of prioritized just by uh, applying before that February deadline. So if you're thinking about this, I encourage you to go ahead and go to the website to apply today. I'll take the slide back just so you can see all of those links. There you go. Um, and make sure that you also are completing the application for the supplemental grant. You are, uh, you know, invited to try to apply for up to $500,000 of financial support, which can be really significant if you were going to take a summer job, or if you just have any other summer plans or work that um, you know, you're kind of taking your eyes off of to be a part of this program. It is just two weeks, so it is a short time commitment if it's something that you want to juggle or fit into an otherwise busy summer. So I hope that it feels like something that's accessible and easy enough to add to, you know, existing summer plans. And then, of course, there's always the self-paced opportunity. I'm more than happy to share a link to the slides with anyone who was here, if it's possible to receive an attendee list, or I can share it with the organizers. Recommended skills, honestly, um, a lot of the programs and a lot of the activities that you'll be doing through the program don't require any previous coding skills, but they do often ask kind of questions that I prompted you with at the beginning, trying to think about how to apply a lot of what you're learning to the real world. So to supplement the everyday regular coding instruction, you do have those opportunities to talk with 
um, women in tech. We have panels from our corporate partners and tech partners where you get to have an opportunity to speak to these women directly and ask them about you know, what their careers are like, but also how they got there. So I think the best way to prepare, if there's anything to prepare for this program, is just thinking about how you would like to apply these skills. And if you have any existing interests or passions that you're looking to pair them with. Um, for the question about how about students with cybersecurity backgrounds, I'd still recommend you apply. Um, it, it is possible if you've done extensive work, you know, in that area that this might feel redundant, but I'd rather you go ahead and apply and take a look at what's being covered, um, than count yourself out before you do. Um, Oh, that early application deadline here. I can go back to that slide so that we have it up for the timeline. Oh, maybe I don't have it here. That early application deadline is February 16th and the regular deadline is March 15th. The program is entirely virtual, 100%, also the self-paced, but you do have opportunities to connect with advisors and um, instructors and other students. Okay, and I think I've gotten to all of the questions. Is there anything else? A lot of our questions can um, have answers on our FAQ page. So I recommend uh, I can send the slides to this deck and you can go through the links in the support section, but I encourage you to check those out. Almost every question you could think about has been asked and answered there, but please do try to remember that this program is super accessible and designed for students who don't have any past CS experience. So you definitely shouldn't be thinking about, uh, you know, if you're ready or if you're prepared, dive in and this is the opportunity to kind of learn these skills that you might've been thinking about trying out either during the academic year or on your own time. It's a wonderful, wonderful way to dive into the world of coding. Uh, and for this question about affiliation, you'll see it. I don't, uh, I can't give you the question number, but there is a section that asks about um, information about you. And the question is literally says, um, are you affiliated with any of our community partners? And there's a drop down menu and you can select uh, Loudoun County from there. If you have any issues with that, or if you know there's any technical glitch and you can't find it, submit your application even without the affiliation and send us an email. And then we will make sure to, um, to kind of affiliate you on the back end. So no worries if you're not able to do it when you're applying. No problem, yeah. Well, with that, I really thank you all for your time. I hope that this helps open up the world of possibilities of participating with Girls Who Code this summer. I'm going to go ahead and throw my personal email into the chat so that you can reach out to me directly. As I said, I get to work with Loudoun County year round, and I'm so more than happy to help anyone um, guide them through the application to get those submitted, especially before that early deadline, so you can get that priority consideration. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, students, for attending this afternoon. And so, uh, wow. thank you so much to our presenter for sharing all that information. The presentation was fantastic, and we have some great opportunities for our students. Thank you all for joining this evening.